All right, so this is the second video about 11.1. .1. It's about partial sums of a sequence. And the partial sums is what we get when we add up parts of the terms. Okay, so we might add up the first three terms. We might add up the first four terms. We might add up the first ten terms. And so you can see here, if I have a sequence, a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, all the way to a sub n, and so on and so on, the partial sum, or s sub 1, is a1. That's it. The partial sum of 2, or the second partial sum, is a sub 1 plus a sub 2. Third partial sum is the sum of the first three terms. Fourth partial sum, sum of the first four terms. The nth partial sum is the sum of the first n terms. We're going to use that terminology a lot. The nth term. And the nth term is just out there, all right? And there's some other information. S sub 1 is the first partial th sum. S sub 2 is the second partial sum, and so on and so on, okay? So we're going to do a couple of these problems here. Let me just uh, get an equation here or a sequence. It says find the first four partial sums ugh, of uh, and the nth partial sum of the sequence given by this a sub n equals to the n minus 1. Well, the first thing we want to do is we want to figure out the first four terms. So the first term is going to be 2 times 1 minus 1, that's 1. Second term is going to be 2 times 2, that's 4, minus 1 is 3. A sub 3 is 2 times 3 minus 1, that's 5. And A sub 4 is 2 times 4 minus 1, which is 7. So we can see that it goes up by 2. That's a pretty simple, straightforward sequence. Now, if we say, what's the first sum? Well, the first sum is just a sub 1, which is 1. Second partial sum is going to be a sub 1 plus a sub 2. So that's going to be 1 plus 3, which is 4. All right. Third partial sum is going to be a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3. So that's 1 plus 3 plus 5, or... 9. And the third partial, or the fourth partial sum is a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3 plus a sub 4. So that's 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7, which is 16. Now, this is where the tricky part comes in S sub n. So how do these relate? Well, the first sum is 1, the second sum this is s sub 1. The second sub is 4. The third sum is 9. And the fourth sum is 16. Well, the fourth sum is 16. Third sum is 9. Second sum is 4. First sum is 1. How does that work? Well, it's n squared. If you go and you look, 4 squared is 16. 3 squared is 9. 2 squared is 4. 1 squared is 1. It's all about finding patterns. That pattern right there, n squared, is the sum of n terms. And so if I ask you for the sum of the first 100 terms, you would do 100 squared, which would be 10,000. And that's what would happen if you had to add up, say on an SAT or ACT, the first 100 odd integers. 1, 3, 5, 7, those are the first four. But if you had to list out the first 100, that would be a lot. If you know this, then you can figure that out by using the partial sums theorem, okay? Let's do uh, something having to do with sigma notation now. Sigma notation looks like this, and this is starting to look pretty fancy, uh, fancy schmancy uh, work here. So sigma notation <clears throat> is this big Greek letter, looks like a letter E, but it's sigma. Okay, um, there's a couple different things. One, sigma means sum. This bottom number is where we start. It's the starting point. This top number is where we end. And this is what we add. Okay, so you can see right here that this sigma of a sub k from 1 to n is the sum of a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3 plus a sub 4 all the way till we get to a sub n. 
Looks very confusing, but I guarantee it'll be a piece of cake once we start doing a problem. So let's look at this first one. Find the sum of sigma of i, sum of i, from 2 to 9. Well, the term here is just i, so we're just going to plug in those different numbers. And so if I plug in the first number, which is 2, we got that plus the third number, the fourth term, the fifth term, sixth term, seventh term, eighth term, ninth term. We just have to add those up. 5, 9, 14, 20, 27, 35, 40, Four. That's the sum of i from 2 to 9. 2 is the first, 9 is the last. If we slide over here to these other, this other spot, it's the sum of k plus 5 from 5 to 9. That means I'm going to put in 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then add all those terms up. So that's going to be 5 plus 5 plus 6 plus 5 plus 7 plus 5 plus 8 plus 5 plus 9 plus 5 10 plus 11 plus 12 plus 13 plus 14 that's 21 33 46 60 that's the sum okay we simply plug those numbers in as we go through Here's another one. This one's kind of tricky. The sum of 2 from the second term to the seventh term. Well, the second term is 2. Third term, 2. Fourth term, 2. Fifth term, 2. Sixth term, seventh term. And so now, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, we just add those up. Okay. And then this final answer, or final problem, is a little bit trickier, and that's because this k plus 5 is different than this k plus 5. Here, k plus 5 is a term. This is just wanting to do k, the sum of k from 5 to 9, and then add 5. So that's going to look like this, 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9. That's the sum, and then we throw a 5 out to the side. So that's 11, 18, 26, 35, 35 plus 5, which is 40. So there's a brief overview about sequences and uh, summation notation. We're going to do some example problems in class tomorrow, and uh, hopefully you can work on those and find the patterns, and Mr. McBride will be able to help you out a little bit in class, and we'll pick up where we left off today, uh, tomorrow. Um, we'll also post a new video on this stuff with a couple more example problems tomorrow online. So enjoy and good luck.